Hello everyone, Dr. Kimball here. I'm gonna spend a little time today. Let me try that again. No, just leave it on, we'll just let it roll. Okay. Hello everyone, Dr. Kimball here. I'm gonna spend some time today talking a little bit about really a worst case scenario with spine surgery, okay? And the reason why I think this is important is because everyone has heard some story about someone who's had spine surgery and it's just been an absolute disaster. Uh, I see patients that have had that happen to them on occasion and it's pretty heartbreaking. Well, <clears throat> the first thing I would tell you is that you can't throw all of those um, bad outcomes into the same boxes that that could happen to you. And I'm gonna give you a couple hints and a couple things to understand about when and why that happens and how if you ended up going to see a spine surgery, obviously you're thinking, how do I avoid that from ever happening to me? So to illustrate this point, I'm gonna share something, a little story, and, and I'll hopefully provide some films for you that you can look into it and, and try to understand what I'm talking about. This is a, a, a recent uh, patient experience that I uh, reviewed. So this patient had uh, been in, you know, had some degenerative changes in their spine, had some back pain on and off, and ultimately was involved in some sort of motor vehicle accident, complained that their back pain got a little bit worse, which can definitely happen. Uh, the patient went and saw a new spine surgeon, and this spine surgeon said, oh, you've got a new disc herniation, and you need a laminectomy, and you need a fusion in your back. Well, here's the problem. Um, I'll show you the films to demonstrate this, but the patient had no symptoms, or excuse me, no evidence of instability in the spine. So the spine was not slipping. There was no spinal deformity or abnormality in the alignment of the bones in the spine. And so in that setting, fusion surgery, it's a little harder to justify needing it. Okay, and when I see patients that have spine surgery or spinal fusion in the low back that end up having poor outcomes, it ends up being usually patients that have had a slip, excuse me, that have had a spinal fusion um, and the surgeon has indicated it really just for um, back pain without any slippage of the vertebrae. So having a slip disc or a spondylolisthesis, uh, other words for that are spondylo or spondy, we tend to kind of use those synonymously. That's the first thing that this patient did not have. The surgeon told the patient she had a new herniation. There wasn't much of a herniation present at all. Um, and ultimately ended up doing a two-level laminectomy. So he did a laminectomy at the L4-5 level and the L5-S1 level, which are the two bottom segments in the lumbar spine, and then performed a fusion in the L5-S1 level. And I can look at the films and kind of see what he was thinking and why he was considering to do that, um, but the justification is a little bit, uh, we'll just say sketchy, that it, it probably shouldn't have been indicated. Now, here's the real problem. The patient went through the surgery. There weren't any major complications from the surgery. Uh, after the surgery, she had persistent low back pain. Questionable whether or not she was better. Now, once you've had a fusion surgery, it, you are gonna end up having a risk for having to have another fusion surgery. And I've talked about this in some of my other videos because a fusion across one segment can make the other segment develop slippage. Now, in this patient's case, she had a laminectomy at the level above, which kind of puts it at a little bit increased risk of developing that instability. And I looked at her x-rays not two months after her fusion was done, and she had already started to develop, well, she had a little bit before the surgery, but she developed even more slippage. So here we are, we have a patient who I don't believe ever needed a fusion surgery because she didn't have the proper indications for it. Nevertheless, she underwent a fusion surgery, didn't get better, and now is going to need to have another fusion surgery to fix the problem that was really created by the first fusion. That's a worst case scenario. So when that patient comes to me and has more pain, like I had back surgery, the pain didn't get better, and then six, 12, whatever months later, it actually started getting even worse. Now that person's having symptoms from 
an adjacent level problem. And that's a new problem that only started because the first fusion happened. So what I tell them is, listen, the best case scenario is for me to get you back to where you were maybe two, three months after your, your fusion surgery. But getting you back to no pain, I, I don't know that that's realistic. And so it's a, it's a pretty damning process and it's psychologically really frustrating to say, wait a minute, so you can't even get me, I, I'm, I'm gonna have to live with this pain forever? And the answer is, unfortunately, sometimes yes. There are other ways to treat the pain, but you can't, this is the most important thing to understand about fusion. It's, it's not a bridge that you can uncross. Once you have, you know, fused the bones or even attempted to fuse it, you can't undo it and we can't convert it to a replacement. We can't take it out. Yeah, we can take the hardware out, but that doesn't mean we're taking out the fusion. When you do attempt a fusion, there's a risk that the fusion doesn't go all the way, that it doesn't actually take. That could be a, a problem, Mul multiple reasons could cause that. It could be the technique, it could be your bone quality, it could be that you're a smoker or a diabetic or have other risk factors. It could be a variety of things. But you could go through a surgery that wasn't indicated and then end up having to have another surgery to fix that because the first surgery didn't work properly. And then even on top of that, after you fix that, you could go into a scenario like this one that I've just shared with you where a patient ends up needing another surgery. That is that is just heartbreaking. So what are the indications for fusion surgery in the low back? And I'm just gonna give you just really two simple indications. One is instability of the spine. I'm not talking about instability the way that chiropractors talk about it. I'm talking about it the way that surgeons or spine surgeons would refer to it, meaning slippage of the vertebrae. Some sort of instability that could be related to degeneration of the spine where you develop instability. It could be related to a fracture, some sort of trauma. Sometimes the, the posterior elements of the spine can fracture in your adolescence and kind of put you at risk for developing a slip. I have another video on that. That's called a PARS fracture or PARS defect. And that can cause the bone to slip and cause nerve impingement and pain and things like that. That's an indication. And then the other would just be uh, some sort of spinal deformity. Okay, so that's what we refer to as scoliosis. And the percentage of people in the population that have real scoliosis is that, that needs surgery is a lot lower than you might think. Now you might have had a, a doctor or a chiropractor or someone tell you at some point that you've got a curved spine. That doesn't mean that that is the cause of your back pain. Uh, and that doesn't mean that you need that, that curve corrected or fused or anything, heaven forbid. So. Uh, these are just some helpful tips to start out. I'll, I'll spend some more time talking about these other topics, indications for spine surgery. There is a time and a place to do spinal fusion even when there isn't a slipping of the vertebrae or a deformity, but that's more of a nuance to the spine surgeon's selection of the patient and it usually has to do with some element of spinal nerve root impingement or stenosis that would require you know a lot of bone removal that would then necessitate the fusion so we'll get into that I'll, I'll go over that in a whole other another discussion but this is a good starter don't get fusion surgery in your spine unless you have one of those two diagnoses instability deformity or fracture i guess that's three so thank you very much